Hey everybody, uh, World War Boy here, and I've finally gotten around to making this video, as you can already see by the title. This is going to be an unboxing of my original World War II German M, uh, or GM, excuse me, GM-30 gas mask uh, and canister and filter. Now, as you can already see, the filter is already on the table, and I actually got it two days ago. And you're probably wondering why it didn't just come with the whole set. Uh, because the gas mask and the canister will both fit in, well, the gas mask and the filter will both fit in the canister. But uh, the dude didn't ship it that way so that it would be a little bit lighter and it wouldn't cost as much to ship. So uh, I got that two days ago and then I was waiting on this one to come in. So it finally came in. Um, both packages, of course, came from the same seller, uh, which came from Warsaw, Poland. As you can see here on the top, it says Polska, which is Poland. And then on the other side here, you can see used mask in metal box, which is the uh, gas mask canister. Now, when I opened the filter the other day, I actually filmed that, uh, but I didn't save any of the footage. And I used my German bayonet to open it, which wasn't a good idea because I ended up uh, cutting my finger. So even, you know, almost 80 years later, you can still become a victim of World War II, like I did. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to be using this again to open up the package. So hopefully I won't injure myself now, um, but I'm going to go ahead and open this and I'll, uh, you know, start the video back once I get this package open. All right, well, we got our box open and uh, we don't really need our Mauser K98 bayonet anymore, so I can set it to the side. Uh, but let's go ahead and open this finally. I've been so excited to finally make this video and I've been really, really um, excited to get this package in the mail. As you can see, there's some uh, polished writing on the uh, package. But anyway, let's go ahead and open this. Just folding this back here. Have some packing material. Oh yeah, and by the way, uh, the gas mask filter uh, container also had a lot of random stuff in it, like receipts and crap and random papers. But anyway, I figured there would be a lot of that in here too. Uh, but I'm more concerned about this. Oh boy. Look at that. That is nice. Uh, anything else in here that I should worry about? Probably not. Just uh, packing stuff. So I'm going to sit that out of the way. But, oh boy. Look at this. Words cannot describe how long I have wanted one of these. Ah, <sighs> well, we got an original strap here. Um, the canister is original. And I'll go more into depth in a little bit about uh, the filter, the canister, and the mask, source, of course, itself. The mask is in here. Uh, but let's take a look at the canister real quick before we actually open it. Uh, one thing I will mention, we have some original paint here with a number uh, 3185 which apparently looks like it was painted white and then over again with black uh, and then another thing i'll notice is here on the bottom of the can we have a d stamp which i'll get it more into this later uh, but the d stamp signifies that the can has been waterproofed um but yeah so here's our gas mask canister our filter will also fit in here. Like I said, the dude shipped it in two packages because it, he wanted it to be lighter. Um, we can see several of these um, loops here. These are for your other straps. The only original strap still is this one. Um, the other ones, unfortunately, are gone. But in very nice condition. Of course, you still can see a lot of the original paint. Very nice. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and open this thing. I've been... I mean, I, I'm kind of shaking almost. Uh, so what you do to open it is pull down here on this and slide it over. And we can pop the top to our gas mask. Ooh, got some packing inside also. Let's take that out, throw it aside. Oh man, <laughs> there you can see our gas mask on the inside. I'm going to try and take this out as carefully as I can. Oh, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> look at that. Oh, man. Jeez. Look at that. We have the same uh, paint on the front of the mask. Wow. Look at that. That is nice. I love that so much. Man. 
Can't believe I finally got one of these. This is crazy. Man, that, that is... Mm. <laughs> that is very nice. I'm, I'm so happy with this. The rubber is, you know, it's in very, very good condition despite its age. And the, the lenses, too, are, are just in immaculate condition. This thing is in such good condition. It's almost unbelievable. But, man, that, that is nice. All right, well, uh, I need to stop ranting about this thing and actually, um, you know, kind of go more in-depth <laughs> in the video and kind of tell some information about uh, the filter, the can, and the gas masks. Uh, so I'll get into that right now. Uh, now, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a World War II German GM30 gas mask, or Gummy Mask 30, uh, which the 30, of course, uh, represents the year, 1930. Uh, it's a gas mask. Of course, it was used, being, it, it being a World War II German gas mask, of course, it was used by the German Wehrmacht during World War II. Um, it was used between 1930, of course, when it was first introduced, up until... Uh, 1938 when the GM 30 this one was upgraded to the GM 38 now if I'm lucky enough I may be making a video about a GM 38 in the future but until then I'm just gonna stick with this one um, even after this one was uh, upgraded to the GM 38 these were still used until the war's end uh, you know there were more models uh, and I'll get into those later too but the GM 30 and GM 38 were the two primary popular I guess you would say most produced models Looking at the mask, you can see here on the back, it has a five-point um, harness system. We have one here, one here, one at the top, and then two on the other side also. And then here at the bottom, we have a neck strap, which would be used to hold the mask uh, around your neck uh, rather than in the canister. If you needed it, it would be around your neck and easier accessible than having to get it out of your canister. So that's the purpose of the neck strap here. Let's take a look at the rest of the mask itself. Um, now, the mask itself, other than the eyepieces and this bit down here, uh, the mask is made of a uh, thick kind of canvas material coated in a thin bit of rubber. If we look on the inside of the mask here, you can see that this bit is rubber, and then on the outside we have uh, kind of a canvas material, and then where the actual mask meets your face we have a bit of leather that goes around all points uh, or all sides of the mask uh, the eyepieces are made of brass i believe if you look close at this eyepiece right there you can actually see some of the brass shining through and then the two eyepieces are made of a thin cellulose also the um i forget what this is called i'm just going to call it the inhale an exhale port because this is where the filter screws in and the air intake. Um, but these are made of aluminum. I'm not actually sure if they made them out of anything other than aluminum. Maybe in some of the other uh, GM30 and GM38 models. Uh, but as far as I know, these are made of aluminum. And this is also threaded for a 40 millimeter filter, which we have here. And you can also see here the gas mask with the filter on which looks very nice, which simply uh, just screws into the 40 millimeter aluminum uh, filter housing. I'll get more into the filters in a few minutes. Now setting the mask and the filter aside, let's take a look at the canister. As you can see, the mask is stored in a um, steel carrying canister. Now the, the German word for this, you know, if you watch my channel, you know my German is absolutely garbage and horrendous, so I'm sorry for always ruining your ears. But I believe the German word for this is Gasmaskenbusch, which roughly translates to gas mask canister. Uh, on the inside of the lid, if I open this again, we can see there's a separate compartment here on the roof of the lid. And now this is uh, used to store the gas mask anti fog inserts for the lens, also spare lenses. Um, now if we take a look at this closer, uh, you can see two things very, very interesting here. The first thing I'll point out is this right here. Uh, now I've talked about these a little bit on previous videos of my channel. These are called Waffenamt, and what a Waffenamt is, to simplify it, it's pretty much just a German 
uh, inspection or approval stamp. You can see there it's a uh, small eagle and the swastika. And then what's very, very interesting, more interesting so than the Lofenopt, in my opinion, is right here we have something extremely personal. We have the owner's name, Killian Bassett, uh, and then also some writing there. So Killian Bassett is the original owner of this canister. Uh, you know, I'm not sure whether Killian Bassett may still be alive or, you know, if he died during the war. But uh, either way, this gas mask canister ended up making it to my collection, and I am very glad that I got it. Um, but looking at the uh, small compartment here, as I said, these are for the spare lenses. It opens up like so on a hinge. And then on the inside, we have a small spring, which is used to hold down uh, your extra lenses. Now let's talk about the canister types. Uh, the first model of the um, Reichswehr and Wehrmacht canisters from 1930 to 1935 are around 26 centimeters high with a diameter of around 27 centimeters. The second model, used between 1935 and 1936, is slightly shorter than 75 centimeters with the same diameter of 12 centimeters. Uh, and the closure system uh, changed, now having a canvas pull strap, such as we have here. The third model, used between 1936 and 1938, uh, has an adapted closure system again. The dimensions are the same as the second model. The fourth model, used between 1938 and 1945, stays the same as the third model, but it's longer, around 27 centimeters, uh, to better accommodate the rubber GM38 mask. Earlier versions of the fourth and previous types are not waterproof. Later variants, however, are marked with a D, such as we have here to indicate that they are waterproof. Now that we've talked a bit about the canister and the mask, Let's go into the uh, filters. Now, I will put on screen um, a picture that shows all the different filter, well, most of the filter variants, um, so you can look at those, and I'll also put a thing over to the side uh, that tells, you know, what they are and whatnot. Uh, but the mask was issued with many different filters. Um, you know, each are varying. Uh, this one, if you look at the top, you can see is a FE37R filter, and then down here at the bottom, we have another FE someone painted on it, uh, but I'll show the filter more in a moment. Um, but the, the Wehrmacht specifically used several filters, mainly FE37, which we have here, FE41, and FE42. In general, most filters were painted green like this one. Now, one last bit to go along with this video. I'm going to talk slightly about GM30 uh, variants. Now, the masks stayed mainly the same throughout the years with only the uh, valve housing down here uh, changing. Different variants of the mask did exist, such as the GM30 telephone mask, which is a GM30 with a built-in microphone in the left cheek. Uh, there's also the GM30 Luftwaffe. Uh, the Luftwaffe had an additional lateral round thread connection here, uh, depending on the aircraft type, right or left, with corrugated hose or filter. Depending on the requirements, the, uh, the unneeded connection here uh, could be sealed with a round threaded plug, which I believe those are made of Bakelite. Uh, and these masks were even used by tank crew near the war's end. There was also the GM-30 Funker, or Microphone. Uh, this mask was developed for the Kriegsmarine, but also was used uh, in other branches for radio operations. And there was also the S-mask. There's no difference between the normal GM-30 and the S-mask, only the RL stamp. To simplify the gas mask production, the manufacturers could only produce certain masks uh, also, each year, the Wehrmacht discarded a certain percent of the masks to refresh them with new ones. Uh, these discarded masks were inspected and then uh, could be sold to civilians for about 12 Reichsmark apiece. Taking a look a little bit at the filter right here, you can see F-E-U-B uh, painted that on. That's not supposed to be there. Then at the top, you can see F-E-37R, um, all original paint too. It's in very good condition. Now, one thing, I'm probably going to make a video soon about war, uh, just memorabilia in general that could be hazardous to your health, and gas mask filters certainly are one of those because um, old gas mask filters from World War One up until, you know, during the Cold War, uh, a lot of them contain asbestos, and this one most certainly does. It's inside the bottom here. If you can see the kind of gray material underneath all of these holes here, that's actually asbestos, which if breathed in for long enough, can cause lung cancer in the future. Um, so I definitely won't be breathing out of this. Um, but a very nice 
very nice filter. Got most of the original paint, and it does have a Waffen Opt on it also, but it's very hard to see and very faded, so I won't exactly show that. Um, taking a little bit closer look at the mask again, you know, you can see the valve housing here. Some of the paint's chipped away, exposing the aluminum underneath, and um, yeah, so very nice mask. If I kind of turn the mask inside out, you can see there at the top of the lens, it is dated 1940. If we look inside the mask a bit more, you can see down here at the bottom, we have a strap for your chin and then the interior of the uh, valve housing. We have our leather here. And uh, if we flip this kind of upside down, you can see right there, we have another Waffenamt. There you can see our Waffenamt a little bit better. It is another uh, very small eagle with a swastika. And then there is a better condition one down there, as you can see, W.A. Waffenamt. And then one more time, our canister with the extremely nice original paint. See our D on the bottom for waterproof. Just kind of give it a, a spin around here. And then our closure system on the front. Pull this down and open it again. You can see the inside the canister. Well, not really because my lighting is terrible, so I'm sorry about that. Um, now, a lot of these would have an aluminum insert. Also, I forgot to mention that, uh, but mine doesn't have that. And also, you would have a spring in the bottom, which would hold in the gas mask cleaning cloth. I don't have either of those, unfortunately. And you can see there again our uh, our name, Killian Bassett, and then our Waffen Opt at the bottom. Um, but I have been waiting for this for so long. I'm so glad that I finally got it, and... Uh, this is definitely now one of my absolute favorite pieces in my collection. I'm absolutely in love with this thing. I hope you all enjoyed the video also. I hope you learned a few things about the GM30 gas mask. But that's pretty much it. So um, I hope you enjoyed my unboxing at the beginning and then kind of the overview of the GM30 gas mask. But like I said, that's pretty much it. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.